everyone, welcome to episode 14. Today I am with Isabel Wood and we've just known each other through school. We went to elementary school together and then now we're taking the same French class together and Bonjour. Just, yeah, Bonjour. That's like all I know how to say. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> a single thing. I got an 83 on my final though, so. <gasps> Look at you. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you the question I ask everybody and what is your testimony? I have to write down points because my it's testimony. A, it's okay. Okay, so I grew in and out of like a Christian household and mm -hmm. it was like more of the non-denominational type mm -hmm. of vibe. And just because like my family isn't super cookie cutter, it was just kind of like, um, like my mom had a church she really liked and we would go every once in a while and it was like my mom's a firm believer sometimes. I don't, I don't know. I don't know her faith. I don't know. She just, I know that she's a firm believer and uh, so then growing up I was like, I went to VBS and I went to Awana. Never was, never was like the Sparky of the Year kind of vibe, um, <laughs> but uh, I still went. And then my fifth grade, like after fifth grade, um, my mom was like Rachel Clark then because she got married. But she was like our youth minister. She mm -hmm. um, was having a girls Bible study for like middle school through high school on Thursdays. And my mom was like, "Do you want to go?" And I was like, in my brain, I was like, "So." I don't want to learn about God, and Rachel is a very intimidating woman. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to her house and learn about God. So I was like, no. And she was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> so then I went, and my first ever study was in Colossians, which I will reference later. Um, and then, what happened? Oh, so we go to a camp every year. Mm -hmm. Crossings. My own bracelet. We go to crossings every year, and I don't even care. <laughs> um, we, went, we go to crossings every year, and this particular year, our youth pastors were talking to my mom, and this was in like 2018, 2019, and they were like, we have an extra spot, and we want her to go, like one extra spot. And so it was just kind of like, it was meant, that spot was meant for me. Mm -hmm. So then I went, and I had a great time, and then later that year, I was like 12, I went to our fall retreat, and we were worshiping, and that was like when I first ever really felt the Holy Spirit like physically move toward me. And so then I, I like, they did that, you know that thing where they're like, if you need to have a conversation with an adult, mm -hmm. go ahead now. And I sprinted. I went <laughs> straight to the back and I like spouted forth the gospel to my youth leader, Rachel Clark. And Rachel Bland now, congratulations. Not, not new news, but she's married now. Congratulations, so. Rachel. So, um, she, uh, I, I had that talk with her and I accepted Christ into my life when I was 12. And then in 2020 like I consistently went to church I consistently was a big part of my youth group because I know your church is like really big mm -hmm. I go to like a smaller church like a 40 50, like 40 to 60 throughout the year like amount of kids in that youth group and so um I would consistently be at youth group and I just I'm like the talky one at youth group like mm -hmm. I talk all the time I'm like like whenever they're like does anyone want to comment on this or say this they're like they, everyone looks at me so I can like break the ice like yesterday that yeah I broke the ice yesterday I talk a lot um but in 2021 I left the church because of just some things in myself and I just like my faith wasn't really there so I just kind of left and then that summer I went to crossings with them again 2022 I went again and then I had that like camp high that like mm -hmm. fire and then I left, like really left. And then um, it was just, first it was because I didn't care about God anymore. And Madison could firsthand see me at school. I did not act like a Christian. I didn't, no one, if you didn't know me in sixth grade when I was pushy and everyone needed to know that I brought my Bible to school. Well, yeah, that was because me. you invited me to do a Bible study. Um, it was like over the phone. Yeah, and then we never really and got to no, it. No, but I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like, it kind of like pushed the jump start in my faith. And then, you know. And then, yeah, so after that, you could just like tell. If you didn't know me before, you would have never known that I went to church ever. And um, so then, uh, oh, so it was just because like I had a lot of, like I knew he was there and I had a lot of conviction, but I ignored it and I... Um, I was in a relationship at the time, and uh, in 2022, he also got saved, but collectively, we weren't in, like, a godly relationship whatsoever, and we both kind of just, like, leaned away, and I'm not saying it's his fault. I wish him the best forever, and it was never his fault, but that was one of my excuses. Mm -hmm. 
um, was because I was so comfortable where I was and my sin, all the things that I like put my focus in, I had a lot of really bad habits and things like that. I just was so comforted by it. And that's one of the devil's biggest lies is like, mm -hmm. he makes you feel like you're happy when you do it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I just had so much sin in my life. And also I had a couple problems with my church and then, um, so I just, I completely left. And then a couple months ago I started having like even when I was because me and my boyfriend broke up in March and even then I was having so much conviction but I was just ignoring it and then later I started feeling it more and more and more and then when I was having like this mental breakdown I called my friend from work his name's Brayden he's awesome and I had absolutely nobody I was like sobbing in my room I had nobody so I called him and he was like so this is probably not the best time because you are crying, <laughs> but I think this is the perfect time for you to grow in your faith. And I would have just ignored him if I wasn't thinking it at the same time that he said mm -hmm. it. And I was like, so that's God. Mm -hmm. So then I also, another thing that was definitely God, my, a bunch of my kids in my youth group, like the older, like graduated people and some of my leaders, they all go out every Wednesday night and I work on Wednesdays. So they pull up to Chick-fil-A. It's kind of like it's nighttime and they're at Chick-fil-A and for about a year anytime because um my one of my like women's ministry leaders rachel bland she is like my boss's sister okay. so they're always there all the time and i like would hide from them Aww. like because i was so scared and um this time i ran to the back and i was like megan kobe's here and megan kobe shout out megan she um is one of my favorite people in the entire world she just clicks with me and my personality and like she, we are the same person mm -hmm. And she makes me feel so comforted and so seen. And so I was like, she's here. I think I'm going to talk to her. <laughs> so I went up to her and I was like, Megan. And so she came over and I was like, I need your number. I need to talk to you. So then I called her. No, I didn't. That's not true. I texted her and I was like, we need to talk ASAP. So then she picked me up from my house and we just drove around forever. And I kind of came to terms with the fact that I needed Jesus again and I was ready to come back to church. And the things that I disagreed with in my church were just people hurting people. Mm -hmm. That's what a church is. And so I was just like, people are growing and I can forgive them. So mm -hmm. I fully decided to come back to church a couple weeks ago. And it was, I've, it was awesome. So then mm -hmm. like that same week I was like, talking to my new youth pastor, his name is Zach Newsome. he's awesome, he, um, was, Megan was like, you don't have any room for another student, do you? And he was like, actually, <laughs> I bought 43 spots, but we're taking 42. And I was like, you're kidding me. So then I just again. like, again, so that's like, we're, it all comes full circle. That's mm -hmm. my favorite thing to say during church is like, when something clicks, I'll go, I look at everyone, I go. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, I, this is, Okay, so I went to camp, and normally I get like a camp high, and like I'm on fire, and then it drains. Mm -hmm. But this time, I mean, I know it's not been that long, but mm -hmm. I, I, I redirected my life a couple days ago, and then not a couple days ago, it was like a, a couple. No, wait, I don't remember. It Some was during, time ago. It was during camp. I redirected my life, and I. Oh my gosh, I have to share this with everybody because my friend she vlogs, and she hasn't gotten the video out yet, but. Everyone been new the best worship song top notch is glorious day and so um, Our last closing night like at crossings we do cross bowl mm -hmm. and it's like this big competition between the three colors and every church is like divide I was not blue this year. My friend stole this from me, but we were green this year green did not win <laughs> We got second place again. We're really bad, but um second after place is better than third place. We've never won though. That's my <laughs> problem um, Actually, I think we won actually. I don't know never mind um, but after Cross Bowl, the worship team from Cedarville University, they, they're called Heart Song. They're probably my favorite in the world. Um, they were like, how about one more song? And it wasn't Glorious Day, but mm -hmm. everyone still, we still worship it. It was like, mm. and then they were like, everyone was like, one more song, please. And then they sang Glorious Day, and it was literally a dance party. I have never done that before, but me and my friends were literally just like jumping around, singing, screaming, dancing. Like, that is how God meant worship to be. Yes. And it was probably the most joy and peace I ever felt in my entire life and then I ran outside in the rain and just like ran around and danced and was feral <laughs> and so I had never felt joy and peace like that in my life and then I was like Madison we should do I should be on your <laughs> podcast and then she did she filled out a little form and she messaged me on Instagram and I was like oh my gosh of course I'm so excited so that is my testimony here we are 
Oh, that's so special. I got shells at the ends. Really? Yeah, I did. Really? I, yeah, it's yes. so wonderful. So, in that season of life where you like kind of lost your way with him, um, what did you learn? Oh. <laughs> um, I learned um, that... So the big point with like my little itty bitty points is nothing satisfies like the Lord satisfies. Amen. So like nothing. So a big point that Megan at camp when we went not that long ago was she kept on saying nothing can fill the Jesus void in your heart. Mm -hmm. So like you can, it's kind of like, I've got a little three year old brother, so I've got first hand experience. You know those little puzzles where it's like the pieces and you like fit it in like the indents and it's like Oh like yes. The, it's yes. like that. Like you can't fit the same shape in like you can't fit a square that is or like the, the most perfect yeah. analogy. It's like you can't feel the Jesus board in your heart. So any peace or happiness that you find when you're away from God mm -hmm. is temporary and it's fake. Exactly. And that's that's tough love. But it's fake mm -hmm. because I tried to fill that void in my heart with so many things, and it was like, oh, okay, I don't need God because I'm happy now. But then, like right. two days later, I was like, oh, it just doesn't last. Like you have to keep doing mm -hmm. it, and it's and then like it just drains you. Very draining. Um, so in the end, everything worldly will fail you. That's what I found, and that's so true. How would you advise others to reconnect with him? Um, just from exp if you're like me, like a lot of people are not for this, but for me, fellowship is probably the biggest thing in my yes. life. Yes, so, yes, yes. Like, I literally would not be here if I didn't have my family from church. And church is just a place. Mm -hmm. There's nothing special about the building. Right. And there's nothing special about the people because we're all sinners. Mm -hmm. But when you're all together and it's just a bunch of believers helping believers it, and building each other up, that, like, helps mm -hmm. a lot because it's just a bunch of people that don't talk about anything but Jesus. Exactly. And then the next step, I would say, which is what every this is all what, like, youth leaders will tell me, is I need to find my ministry. I need to find all this stuff. So once you get yourself in the church, you need to get yourself involved. Like, yes. you need to find your mm -hmm. ministry, your thing that you do because it'll keep you there. And it's yes. just... It's very reconnecting. And then also, everyone says this, but stay in the Word. Because when you're not at church, you should still be at church. Yes. Like, just because you're not in the building doesn't mean you don't need to be studying the Word and finding out things for yourself. Because just mm -hmm. because, like, my pastor, Bobby, like, just because he isn't sitting in front of me telling me things doesn't mean I can't go seek out things myself. Right, exactly. So you should be seeking the Lord in everything you do. Yes. So. And there's... I don't remember what the name of the song is, but it goes, Hell's not scared of a Sunday faith. Like, you're, Amen. like you don't have I a relationship that. with Jesus just, just on Sundays. Exactly. Like, it's a lifetime thing. It's every day of the week. Yeah, you shouldn't have to just, like, you shouldn't just be waiting for your pastor to tell you things. Right. You should want to seek him yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I love Bobby Pell. He's my best friend. But, <laughs> but I should be, and I'm still very bad at this. Everyone struggles, but I find that... I still feel him even though I'm not in the building, even though I'm not with my friends. Right. If I'm sitting in my room or I'm sitting outside. Mm -hmm. It's like you can still find him and yeah, see him. I feel it personally. He's everywhere. I feel his presence right now in this room. Um, but it's just, yeah, he's just everywhere. Pursue him like how he pursues you because he's always pursuing you. You just have mm -hmm. to pursue back. Yes. Are there any pieces of scripture that helped lead you back to Jesus? Um, once I, so I, speaking of Colossians, I, um, decided that I was going to try and read part of it again because when you're 12 you don't remember the same stuff that you read when you right. were almost 16 because I'm yeah. almost 16 and, uh. um, it's not the same because no, I was not. like 11 or 12 um, I, I've been a believer for this long and I still can't I still have to use the table of contents. It's okay. Me too. It's really hard. I to do that today. Because I, I don't have the little, the, yeah, the flaps. Tabs. I don't yeah. have the tabs. So I have to. I did that Here today. Where did it go? Hmm. 1076. Um, if you want to know one thing about me, it's Paul is my best friend. I will, <laughs> if I don't want, like I'm trying to read Job right now and it's really hard to get into because it's a story in the Old Testament and that's not my thing. Mm -hmm. I will always go back to Paul. He's my best friend. Um, but, um, in Colossians, I wrote two on my paper. I don't know why I did that. And, oh no, wait, I'm just kidding. It is two. Um, in Colossians 2, 6 through 15, and then chapter 3, 1 through 17, I would encourage you to read because it just talks about a lot. It's just like rooting your faith because mm -hmm. you can't have like plentiful fruit and like a, like a big, like a big plant 
if the roots are just sitting there. Right. Because they have to be deep and connected. So once yes. you get there, you have to stay there. Mm -hmm. Like you have to root yourself in there or you're going to fall exactly. again. Because that's what happened to me. I just like, I let the roots sit there and then they dried out. So like, mm -hmm. um, the first verse in uh, the section Alive in Christ is like, therefore, as you receive Jesus and the Lord, so walk in him. You don't just receive him and then you're done. Right. It's like if I, if my dad went out and he bought me like a plant, I just like, oh, plant. You have to like take care of it. You don't. You don't just get it. Right. You have to walk Nurture in. It. Yes, you have to be filled with him. You have to walk with him, because we all know this one. And you who were done your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together in him, having forgiven us all in our trespasses. So just because he made you alive doesn't mean you're alive forever. Right. You have to keep that going. And so, um, the one that I really annotated was uh, chapter three, putting on your new self. Um, Another thing that would just, like, this one helped me a lot. Um, like, it's not easy, and it still isn't for the rest of your life to just be a Christian, and that's it. Like, right. you have to have, our worldly selves have to have all these, like, um, just like, the, the, you're just, they're distractions. Yes. And because, especially when you're getting back into your faith, mm -hmm. like I am, like, they're everywhere. Distractions mm -hmm. are everywhere. Like, today, I, um, I, I... I fell short a lot in some of the sin that I used to indulge in a lot in it. I felt ashamed with it, but, you know, um, just, like, I only, I wouldn't have felt ashamed before, but because I know what I know now, I'm growing now, and so, all yeah. growing, and, you know, the devil really attacks what he thinks is valuable, so the more you're getting attacked, you know, kind of take it as a compliment, because God has something in store for you that the Satan doesn't want happening. It's like coffee stunts your growth. I'm going to be 5'4 forever. <laughs> um, but verse 2 is, Set your minds on things that are above, not things on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put your put death there. Ugh, sorry. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immortality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, I think, which is idol idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. So, I... Take away from that, I think that you should read Colossians because it's so... Paul, if you don't know what to read and the Gospels are too... Like, I still think the Gospels are kind of intimidating because it's just accounts of Jesus' life and there's so much to unpack when you're reading things that Jesus did in his life because he's, he's a lot to unpack. Yeah. Um, I just would encourage you to read Paul's letters because he's very... He's very tough love. He's very mm -hmm. just like, this is how it is and you have to do it this way. So he's literally saying... Like, now that I'm getting into my faith, like, you have to put to death all the things that were worldly in you. You have to get out all those distractions because the wrath of God is coming. Mm -hmm. So if you are still, like, consumed in your distractions and, like, the Lord sees you like that, right. apart, depart from me, I never knew you. Right. Because if you have your distractions, you can't, you can't be, you can't have God and distractions on the same pedestal. Not to say yeah. that you won't have distractions. Because we all You're going to have distractions for the rest of mm -hmm. your life, but they cannot be put at the same right. like, you have to overcome pedestal. Them and, um, yeah, because, I mean, Jesus died to save us, so in turn we need to, like, our flesh needs to die in order to live for Him. Mm -hmm. So, that is my uh, scripture. Colossians is one I of my favorite. It. Colossians is my favorite. Um, how or in what ways would you encourage others to block out the distractions and temptations of the world? Um, this is more of a challenge than a how to because if you know me, I cannot think about one thing like more than one thing at once and I get very distracted. So <laughs> that is what I think that's just what the devil uses for me specifically is distractions mm -hmm. because I get so distracted. But just like keeping in the back of your mind that whether or not, like, you have to, when you do something, you should always be thinking about whether or not it pleases the Lord. Right. Because it's very, like, he's not that complicated. Like, he, it's very easy to tell what is wrong and what is right mm -hmm. when it comes to, like, your gut feeling and what the Lord is telling you to do. So, like, he's not going to make it confusing. If it's wrong, you'll feel convicted. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep in mind, like, will it please the Lord? Will I feel good? Because you'll also feel guilty after doing it. If you right. love the Lord like that and you do those things, you'll feel guilty. Mm -hmm. So, like, like, uh, yeah, just, like, keeping in mind that, all distractions will push you farther right. from God. And That's what they're there for. It's not like we can overcome the temptations by ourselves. Like, we get the strength from Jesus. So don't be ashamed to tell people when you have distractions right. and sin in your life. That's what right. fellowship is for. Yes. We're here to uplift you. We're not mm -hmm. here to put you down. Unless exactly. your church does that, then I'm sorry. 
but they're just misrepresenting Jesus. Like they shouldn't be judging you. They're here to help you because none of them are perfect. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No one, no one is perfect, and no one doesn't have distractions. If you come up to me and say I love God and I have no distractions, I'm gonna think you're a liar. <laughs> the Bible says not to lie. Please don't lie. <laughs> Um, I think prayer is also something that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, you might not feel or hear the answer right away, but it'll come at the right time. And whenever I wrote that question, I thought about um, Jesus. Like, he oftentimes combated, like, all the temptations and the tests um, with scripture. Like, just knowing that by heart, not necessarily all the words, but what the gist is and what they're trying to say, um, is going to help you overcome all that. Well, speaking of prayer, just like... Um like, even if you're not doing it for the benefit of other people, alone, prayer just makes you, like, it's easier to understand the Lord. Because mm -hmm. you sit there and you talk to Him and you have all this, like, I think my my person that, bleh, I personally think you should always be praying. Mm -hmm. But not in, like, <sighs> dear Lord, bless this food, nourish my bodies, right. and, like, uh, actually, Andrew Eaton, our camp pastor, he said something that will stick with me forever. He was talking about... Uh, this man that I, I forget how he's like his relation to him is but he's like 80 mm -hmm. and he there's like a like a circle and you can either like when you're driving you can go left right or through the middle like just straight through town and he was talking about how he was just like hey God should I go left right or middle and Andrew was like just laughing at him and you're just like why does that yeah. matter why does God care and he was just like oh you thought I was praying I thought I was just talking to my friend <gasps> Oh, so it's just like you should wow. you shouldn't be praying like sitting at your bedside like all the time right. you should just be talking to him because that helps you understand him more it helps you mm -hmm. feel connected with him especially because like I get distracted if I'm just talking to him it makes me feel like I understand right. him so much more because but, it really is just a conversation because he is because as much as he is your God and he is the one that will be convicting you and he is your creator he's your best friend right. he's still always a relationship be. with you so he just wants to be your best friend just talk to him yeah. One of my favorite quotes, I don't know who said it, it's all over Pinterest, but he knows what you're going to say, and yet he still listens. Like, I love that. Chills. Like, I just love that so much, mm -hmm. because oftentimes, like, I don't know if you have little siblings, but they'll just repeat themselves. And so sometimes when they do that, I just tune them out, and I just don't pay attention to it. But, because I know what they're going to say, but God knows what we're going to say, and he just listens so intently, and I just think that's so wonderful. I love that. Um... Okay, so everything happens for a reason. What do you think the reason was for being distant from God for that period of time? Oh, I keep on throwing the paper down when I need that. <laughs> Jeez. Um, I think um, this isn't like to put myself up. It's just like the Lord blessed me with my... I like to think that my personality is a bad thing a lot. Like that's like something that I'm very insecure about, but... A part of my personality, you guys can be honest, I talk a lot, <laughs> but I also, I feel like I make people so comfortable and I'm mm -hmm. able to talk like that, so I think he gave me just like a spiritual maturity sooner than a lot of people. I'm not saying I'm super mature, but there's a difference between me and like a middle school girl, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so like, or like any of the middle school boys in my youth group, not mature spiritually or in general, right. just saying, <laughs> right. not very mature, um, but I think... He just, I already forgot what I was going to say. Wait. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, I think um, he gave me this season, because, and while it was one of my worst, it was still a gift. Because, mm -hmm. like, even though it's bad, because there was a song, there's a, I forget what song it is. It's like, oh, it's, um, what song is it? It's, okay, sorry. Okay. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Even when everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad. Like, he gives you all those bad seasons so that you can come out stronger. And that's what I was leaning with. I, It's not been that long, and I already feel so much more peace and so much more connected with God and my church. And I think he gave me that so that I could be who I am today in my faith mm -hmm. and be there for those who are younger than me and that are watching me because I'm old enough to the age where like there are kids at my church watching me and how I mm -hmm. do things and that affected my life greatly growing up because I didn't have any older siblings so right. I would look yeah. at the kids at my youth group because that's how like like my older sister who's not my older sister but mm -hmm. Callie Sturgeon she was probably one of the most influential people in my spiritual walk mm -hmm. just because I needed an older sister and she was always there for that and I was always watching her and I think that I couldn't have been that model for people younger than me and like just people watching me in general to right. see what how I do things like 
if I didn't have that year where I was just like, I don't care. Right. So, and it also like it helps you relate to other people because, I mean, a lot of people go through that, and yeah. it's like they don't know necessarily how to gain a relationship with God in the first place, or again, and you have the power to relate to them and help them out. Because a lot of people, I find myself in a position where a lot of people don't relate to me, and it makes me feel like I've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. When obviously I did, I'm a sinner, but um, like. It's not that I didn't do anything wrong. It's just that my walk is different than everyone right. around me. And so everyone's walk is different, but... It's nice yeah. to have people that at least sort of relate to you. Right. So yes, it is. Yeah, that's what my takeaway from that is. Perfect. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, I had something, but I totally forgot. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's what the paper is for. No, I didn't write that down. That's okay. <laughs> um, what was I about to say two seconds ago? Oh, it's okay. This is like a PSA. It is, obviously it's not okay to just like, I mean, do whatever you want, you have free will. But like, um, there's a difference between just like not being a Christian anymore and stepping back from your faith. That is okay. You're not supposed to be cookie cutter Christian at every single church event, praying every single moment of every single day and doing like probably everything that Madison does five times a day because she, <laughs> she is on fire no. she's on no. fire but you don't have to do that every moment of your life like it's okay to step back and breathe because we're not supposed to be perfect now right. madison is I always just on fire yeah. i don't understand what <laughs> no, it is i'm not i'm not i'm not i think you are i promise I'm i think not. you're cool you know I, thank you <laughs> everyone goes through different seasons and like spiritual warfare almost and like i feel like right now in the season I've been really bad at like prayer and I've not been consistent at it. Like no one's perfect. You're all gonna have things that you're gonna be trying harder at or trying to improve or um mm -hmm. what was I gonna say? Like everyone <laughs> sins. It's okay, like no one's perfect, like Isabel said, like yeah. That doesn't make you a bad Christian. You just have to step up a little more. Yeah, so like you can like if you want to spend like I d I don't know any I don't know anyone that spends every moment of their life because obviously Madison does a lot. She's very, she is very out there. You're very out there and you do all these things. You're very big on like works, I think, because you can't have faith that works. Um, mm -hmm. But I can guarantee you there's going to be seasons where Madison doesn't do all that forever. And it's right. okay to go through seasons where you can't give 100% all the time. Mm -hmm. That's where you grow. Mm -hmm. So exactly. this is just a PSA. You don't have to be perfect because you're not. And Jesus still loves you. Yeah. And he still saved you. Would you like to pray or would you like for me to? Um, I can pray. Okay, perfect. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity for me to be here and to speak with Madison and to all the viewers. Um, and I just pray that um, anything that like I was speaking through you, I really hope that I was speaking the words that you wanted me to say. Kind of late now, but <laughs> um, I pray that. Uh, anyone listening um, is able to take away something from this, um, only to benefit you and not to benefit me at all, because um, this isn't about me, it's all about you. Um, I just pray that, um, you know, this is like, I don't know, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I just pray that, you know, um, now that I am, back, I am back in my faith, that I am able to grow for the rest of my life, and that uh, everyone that, you know, is listening Madison, her whole family, everyone is blessed and everyone grows and um, just that they know that they're never alone and that you're always going to be there for them, always going to be there to listen, always going to be there to help them grow. So, yeah, and we ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen.